It's that time of the week. It's TK Friday. Today we're working in black and white with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Stay tuned. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today I have this image by Peter Ellum. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Peter. Today we'll be working on Peter's image. This is three sisters found in Glencoe, Scotland, and I hope I'm pronouncing Glencoe correctly. But please correct me if I am wrong. Right now you're seeing the raw version unedited. I know you see some adjustments here, but I typed my backslash key in my keyboard so you could see the original raw file. You don't even see the linear profile in it yet. I'll show you what it looks like with the linear profile because that's how I processed it. And then I sent it into Photoshop and converted it to black and white. Now you can download that version on my Google Drive. And thanks to Peter, I'm able to share it with everyone so we can all follow along and learn from this tutorial together. So thank you, Peter for that. When you open that up in Photoshop, you'll notice in channels, you'll see sky and foreground. I went ahead and selected those out and saved those for you. So you won't have to mess with that later. By the way, if you click on my affiliate link and go over to the TK web store, you can still save 20% when you use my promo code DK15 off of the TKA plugin for Photoshop. Any training videos over there, that sale ends at the end of this month. And then my promo code will go back to 15% off, which is still a really great saving. So I just wanted to point that out. And by the way, when you use my promo code DK15, I make a small commission and it helps me to keep these TK Friday videos coming your way. Now, let me explain what I did to prepare this to make it a black and white image. So here's the, again, this is the right out of the camera with the Adobe color profile applied to it. This is what it looks like with the linear profile applied to it. Now check it out. Notice the sky here, you'll see a lot more information. See all that information you can see it. Originally I thought, I think I might have to replace the sky, but there's a really beautiful sky here. And I really didn't notice it till I added the linear profile. And then, after making all my adjustments, it ends up looking like this. Now I know it looks over processed and overdone. It's got extra color in it, but you can see all my settings over here. I've added some extra texture because I know it's going to be a black and white. And we like to see a lot of texture in black and white. I added some extra clarity. I added extra vibrance and saturation. And then in HSL, I um, boosted up the aqua and blue for the sky because those extra colors will help me to get a better black and white conversion. And again, it is over processed, but it will help me with my black and white conversion. If you want to see me process this image as a color image using the TK8 uh, plugin for Photoshop, let me know about that in the comments section below. I'd be happy to do it because I think this would make a beautiful color image as well. At this point, it's ready for the black and white conversion, so I'll see you next in Photoshop. Now, here we are in Photoshop. Now, you'll notice I have a group called Black and White Conversion, and inside this group, I have four adjustment layers, a channel mixer layer. This deals with the image, image's colors. I have a selective color layer. This deals with the image's colors as well. And then I convert it to black and white with a black and white adjustment layer. And then I add a curves adjustment layer on top so I can work with the contrast. I'm not going to show you how I do this today because this video would get honestly way too long because today's video is showing you how to use the TK8 plugin for Photoshop to edit a black and white image. And this is my base black and white image where I'll build on top of. There's so many ways of making black and white conversions and this is just one that I really enjoy with these four adjustment layers. If you want me to do a future video on how I make a black and white conversion using this method, let me know in the comments section below. I won't do it on a TK Friday, but I'll do it on either a Monday or a Wednesday. Now I'll switch to a different image. It's going to look the same. I'm going to click on this image right here. This is the image that you will download from the Google Drive. It's a TIFF file Pro Photo Color Space 16 bits. I have the sky and the foreground channel saved that you'll be able to find under my channels. This will save a little bit of time for you. You won't have to select out the sky or the foreground and save them as channels. I have other videos showing you how you do all that and you'll find those on previous TK Friday videos. I'm sorry for the long introduction, but I wanted to set up what we're doing today and let you know how I got to this point where we're going to be processing this image. Let's start with a quick roadmap to let you know where we're headed. 
I want to build up the contrast in this image because you know what? Black and white is all about contrast and textures. Very important. So we want to build up the contrast. I'm going to work with the sky separately from the foreground. And that's what those channels that I've provided for you are going to be used for. And you'll find those up here in my channels. After we've added overall contrast, we're going to get into some dodging and burning. Very important in black and white and color photography, but especially black and white photography. We're going to dodge through selections and we're going to dodge freehand. Now, the freehand is where you get to be the artist. And that is really where the true mastery of editing black and white images comes into play. And then I'm going to show you how to tone with color your black and white image. Just a subtle color toning on top of the image. A sepia tone and a selenium tone. And then we're going to use the color grading tool to quickly get that done. So stay tuned for that. And then finally, we'll add a vignette using a TK action. We'll also be using the blend diff in Photoshop to protect the dark tones. I know we have a lot to do, but let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is come up to my channels and click on sky. We want to intersect that. So click on the mass calculator icon, click on the X for intersect X out of here. We want to intersect that sky with a luminosity mask. So click on the luminosity mask icon. And what I want to select it with, I'm going to select the darker tones in the sky first. So I'm thinking we're going to look at a darks two possibly or a darks three. Now the light areas will be the darks. Uh, let's go with the darks two. I think that looks really good. I think we're going to go with that. Go ahead and click equal here to apply that. So now we have the darks two selected. Let's output that simply to a color grading tool. And then we're going to click on midtones. And what we're going to do here is just pull back on the midtones and watch how that dark blue area of the sky gets darker. Now, the fact that I added extra saturation makes it get even darker, which is really nice. And then we're going to go to the uh, shadow tones and we're going to pull back on the shadow tones as well. See, when I really pull that back, they get really dark. So here is the before and here's the after. And if you want to see what that mask looks like, just click the double arrow here and you can see there it is and click it again. And now we're back to the image. But here is the before and here is the after. I went and labeled my layer sky shadow so we don't get confused later. It's a good idea to name your layers. Let's X out of the color grading tool. Let's come back to my channels. Let's go back and click on sky. We need the mask calculator again, so click on that. Click on the X because we want to intersect that sky. X out of here, and let's go back to luminosity. And this time we want to intersect it with a lights because I want to build up some of the lights in the clouds, not too much. And here's a lights one. This is a lights two. And let's try lights three. I think I'm going to go with a lights three. I'm going to go ahead and click equals and that intersects that selection. And now let's output it to a color grading tool and let's just click on this midtone swatch and let's just pull up on those lights. A decent amount there here. It will, it'll be subtle. Here's a before and here's an after it's just picking those really light lights. And I'm just trying to build up a little bit of contrast. I went ahead and labeled this layer sky highlights. Now let's put these uh, in a group, the highlights and the shadows. I'm on sky highlights, hold your shift key down on your keyboard and click on sky shadows and then click the white side of this group icon here. This puts it in a group with a white reveal all layer mask attached to it. And let's label this sky contrast. Organization is a very important part of editing. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after, but look at that really nice contrast we've added to the sky. Now let's work on building up contrast in the foreground. Now remember we have a foreground selection save. Let's X out of this color grading tool. Let's click on my channels and click on foreground and let's go to the mass calculator again because we want to make an intersection. So click on that, click the X for intersect and let's X out of here. And now we want to work on shadows first. So let's click on the uh, luminosity icon here. And I think I want to go with say either darks three. I'm just looking for very dark tones or darks four. And I think darks four gives me what I want. So let's go ahead and click equals and that intersects those dark tones. So I'm building contrast, right? And so let's output it to a color grading tool. Let's try midtones first. Click on midtones and let's drag this block to the left. 
and see how those really dark darks start to really darken up. If you want them even darker, you can click on the uh, shadow block and pull that back and it'll, it'll get even darker. I don't want to get too dark there. It's going to make those blacks get really blocked up and I don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on this block and reset it. So here's the before darkening the shadows. And here's after. I went ahead and renamed this layer to foreground shadows. When I was preparing for this tutorial, the next thing I did was uh, worked on the midtones and then the highlights. But I found out through experimentation that it was better to do the highlights second and the midtones last. I just got a better result. So it pays to experiment. And with that being said, we'll work on highlights next. So let's get rid of the color grading tool. It doesn't remove any of the adjustments. It just gets it away from the multi-mask panel. It's hiding it. Okay. So now it's gone. So let's go back to my channels and let's click on foreground. Now I want to intersect it. So let's click on the mask calculator and click on the X. X out of here. Now I'm working on highlights, so let's go back to the luminosity masks. And I believe I use luminosity mask lights too, but I added a levels adjustment to it. So click on this modification levels adjustment here. So click here. And what I did was I pulled my highlights over to lighten up everything. See how the highlights, the lighted areas are getting lighter. Okay. And don't worry about what's happening in the sky. It doesn't really matter. So. I'm just pulling this over and we can work on the midtones as well to lighten those up a little bit because I'm looking at some of these areas in here as well. And we can, we can pull the shadows to the right if we want to, to tighten the selection, but I want it just like this. I want nice feathering in here, but let me lighten it up even more. I still want to, I still want to maintain texture in here. Okay. So that's good. I'm going to close this properties panel and let's click equals. And there's my selection, okay? And now we're gonna output this to a color grading tool. So click on the color grading tool. And now I'm gonna click on the midtone block. And what I'm gonna do is just lighten it up. And see how that's lightening all those highlights up here? They're not getting super light, but I'm gonna be dodging and burning here in a little bit. I went ahead and renamed this layer to foreground highlights. Let's take a look. Let's click this eye. Here's the before and just look at the foreground highlights and here's the after. So they're lightened up nicely. And if you want to see this mask, just click the double arrows. You can see what that mask looks like. Click it again and you're back to your image. And now we'll turn our attention to the midtones. Let's hide the color grading tool by clicking X right here. And now we're going to go back to my channels foreground and now we're going to work on the midtones so let's click the mass calculator click the intersect x out of here and let's click luminosity again and we're going to go to midtones midtones 2 and let's click equals and now there's our selection i'll put it to a color grading tool click on the midtone block and let's pull the slider to the right and we're going to lighten up the midtones not too much but right around there Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. I went ahead and renamed this layer foreground midtones. Let's put this all in a group. So that foreground midtones is selected. Hold your shift key down and click on foreground shadows. All three layers are selected. Click on the right side of the group icon here that puts it in a white reveal all group. Let's call this foreground contrast. Now let's shut this layer off. Here's the before the foreground contrast and here's the after. Pretty great results, wouldn't you say? And I find when you break it down into foreground highlights and midtones, you really get a beautiful contrast adjustment, especially in these black and white images where contrast is very important. Now here's something very nice. We have this overall group called foreground contrast with a layer mask. If there's any issues along the edge here of this foreground, like I see a little issue if I zoom in like right let me show you right here and maybe right here. I can just come up to this layer mask, click on it, get my black brush by clicking right here on the CX panel. And I have a nice soft edge brush at 100% opacity and I'll make it small and I could just paint that right there. Okay. And just fix that right up. And this little area right here, I can fix that right like so. So that really helps you out. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could put these two groups in their own group? So 
Make sure you have the top group selected, hold the shift key down, click on the bottom group, and then click the same icon here on the group, the white reveal all. And let's call this um, sky and foreground increase contrast. Now let's see if we've accomplished what we wanted to. Let's take a look at the overall contrast of this image. Here's the before and here's the after. Pretty dramatic results. And next we're going to dodge and burn first through selections and then freehand. Let's get this color grading tool out of the way by clicking the X here and let's go back to the luminosity masks and we want to dodge highlights. So I'm thinking highlights two, let's click on two here. Yeah, and this is gonna hit all the highlights I want. Even some of these more mid-tone areas in here. But highlights two, I think is gonna work. And what we wanna do is output it to a dodging layer. I'm gonna dodge on a 50% gray layer. Uh, you could use either side, they both work the same, but I like the gray layer because it lets you see what you're kind of doing when you're dodging. So I'm gonna click right here. We're gonna be dodging through a selection on a 50% gray layer in the overlay blend mode. I'm starting out with an opacity of 50% and I wanna paint in these lighter areas first. By the way, you know if you're painting through a selection when your selection indicators are turned on, okay? So I have a decent sized brush and with 50%, I'm just gonna start painting across these areas here. And you could be sloppy because you're painting through a selection. Every time you lift your brush, you're gonna apply more of that paint and it's gonna get lighter, okay? And I think that's good. And then I'm gonna reduce the size of my brush a little bit. And now I'm gonna go down to say like 20% and I'm just gonna paint on light areas that I wanna you know, brighten up a bit. And again, I'm painting through selections, but where it's really gonna get fun is when I go through um, and do my freehand. Cause then, then I'll really get very artistic and just really paint the areas that I wanna paint. But now we're selectively you know, building up the contrast and the highlights. Uh, with this uh, dodging technique here. And I'll vary the size of my brush as I go along here. And I think that's good. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. I'm not gonna mess with the sky. I'm gonna save that for the freehand dodging and burning. I went ahead and renamed the layer Dodge Foreground Through Selections. And now we wanna burn the foreground. So let us go back up to the luminosity mask. Click on this icon. And I think I'm gonna go with the darks four because I'm looking for really dark tones. And if I would choose darks three, I would not be, I'd have too broad of a selection. So I'm choosing darks four because it narrows, the, narrows it down to darker tones. And let's just output this to a burn tool. So I'm gonna click right here. On the left side gives me a 50% gray layer in the soft light blend mode, all right? And a black brush. As you can see, I'm painting through a selection because you can see that by my selection indicator. I have a black brush and I'm at like a 40% opacity. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start painting on these dark areas. Every time I lift my brush and paint over it, I'll make that area a little bit darker and I'll slowly build it up. And this is building up the overall contrast as well on this foreground area. Now stay away from the sky up here. I'm gonna go there with my free hand, but First off, it's really the through selections here. I'm just building, I call this the base coat with the dodging and burning on with selections. I'm, you know, I have a base coat of uh, dodge and burn layer down and I'm just painting over this. And, you know, as much as I think I need here. And be careful, you don't want to overdo it. Let's take a look. Here is the before. And here is after, but you see that contrast that's built up? Now, if you wanna see what this layer looks like, if you hold your Option or Alt key down and click on this eye, you can see that's where I'm burning, right? Option or Alt, click it again, you'll see it back. Now let's go to the Dodge layer. Option or Alt, click this, and you can see where I dodged, okay? So Option or Alt, click again, and it is back. I went ahead and renamed this layer Burn Foreground Through Selections. Let's put that in a group. Hold your Shift key down and click on Dodge Foreground Through Selections. That selects both of those layers. Let's click on this group icon with a white group and hold the presses. Houston, we have a problem. I just made a mistake. I'm leaving this in here because I know you'll make it too. I had an active selection and when I clicked on this 
group icon, white mask, it put that selection in the mask, which is not what I wanted. Here's how you fix it. Just come over here on the CX or combo panel and look for this icon right here. Click it, it'll remove the mask. Click it one more time and it'll put a white mask back on. So that's how you fix it. But you'll make that mistake too. That's why I left it in. And if you make that mistake, just forgive yourself and move on. I went ahead and renamed this D and B through selections for dodge and burn through selections, but check this out. Here's the before, my initial base coat, right? Here's my before and here's my after. But look how we're slowly building up the contrast in this image. It's exciting to me. And I hope it is to you too, because this is all part of the joy of editing. Now let's do something here. Let's get, let's come to the CX or combo panel and let's add a dodge layer first. This is for freehand dodging. So click on the left side of this icon that puts a 50% gray layer in the overlay blend mode and it says dodge white paint. And above that, let's put a burn layer. So click on the left side of this burn icon right here. And that says burn black paint and that's in the soft light blend mode. But here's a little tip for you. If you ever wondered what this icon was for right here, this is called live clipping. And if you click on this, if you have any clipping in your image, uh, highlight clipping will show up as red and uh, shadow clipping will show up as blue. Right now you can see I have no clipping in this image whatsoever. But if I go ahead and put say like a curves adjustment layer here and let's just drag this curve in here. See all that blue? That's clipping, right? It's live clipping. It lets you know when you're clipping. And if I take the highlights and drag this to the left, see all that red coming in? That's when the highlights are clipping. This is a really cool tool for you. Uh, because what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be dodging and burning. And if I overdo it, you'll see my clipping warnings coming on. And then I could use gray paint to undo my problem, which is really nice. Let's go ahead and get rid of this curse layer because we really don't need it. I just use that to show you how the live clipping works. So let me just click on the garbage can icon here. And we're going to start out with dodging and make sure you have white paint, but use your handy little... Um, paintbrush tools up here. Click on the white brush and you have your white brush. And by the way, when you're done with the live clipping, when you don't need it anymore, just click here again and it will go away. That's important because you don't want any bits of red and blue showing up in your beautiful black and white image in case you miss the little spot. And now it's time to do some freehand dodging and I love doing freehand dodging. I have an opacity of 30% a flow of 100%. Now remember, every time I lift my brush and paint again, I'll be adding more of that paint. I haven't started painting yet. I'm gonna start painting and then I may speed it up, the video up a little bit because I don't want to have this thing going too long. But let me just start finding areas. And just, again, I'm not painting every light area. I'm just painting areas that I think for artistic purposes would look really good. Like I may lighten up some areas like a little zing of light up in here, you know? And I may go down to like 10% and just paint a little bit in these areas in here. Okay, now I'm going to go back to 30%. And again, I'm just going to find little areas and just hit them. But take your time, relax, and enjoy the experience. I sped up the video so it looks like I'm painting like a crazy man. But really, I'm going kind of slow here and enjoying the experience. But I don't want this getting too long. But vary your brush size, vary your opacities, and just look for areas that excite you that you think a little hit of light would look good. This is your artistic license, and you pull it out and you say, I want light here, I don't want light here, I think it would look good if I add some light here. And when we start burning in a little bit here, you'll see a lot of depth and dimension. It'll take on like a three-dimensional aspect when we start adding burning. It'll make those areas look like there's more texture than is really there. And it's really exciting. And I'm also going up into the sky. But that's cool for now. I went ahead and stopped the recording and I did some more dodging just so I could take my time and get some more areas that I wanted. And I also went ahead and renamed this layer to dodge freehand and the burn layer to burn freehand i haven't burned yet but let's check out the dodge or the dodging here's the before and here is the after pretty cool right and don't forget you have an opacity here you can pull this opacity back if it's too strong next let's work on this burn layer on the burn layer i want to paint with black paint so i'm going to click on my black paint brush in the cx panel and i'm at 20 percent opacity and i'm just going to start burning and then i'll speed the video up 
and uh, then I'll get back with you. But let me start burning some areas. And if I feel I'm too strong, I'll go ahead and pull back on my opacity and vary my brush sizes as well. And it's really cool in these foreground areas up in here, like I can add some depth here and dimension. See how I just darken some areas up. Isn't that cool? It just looks like there's dimension in there now. I love this and I hope you enjoy this. And let me know in the comment section what you think about dodging and burning. I always love hearing from everybody. Appreciate you taking your time out to respond back. That's really nice. At this point, I've sped up the video and I'm going to continue burning here. But at some point, I think I'll stop and then finish it without the recording on. And then I'll show you the final results of the actual burning. So I'm going to stop it right now. And through the magic of video editing, I am back. Now, here's my overall before and after burning freehand. Before and after. Let's put these two layers in a group. Uh, I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on Dodge Freehand and click on the uh, group icon here. I'll name this DB Freehand for Dodge and Burn Freehand. Let's see the before and after of the Dodge and Burn Freehand. Here's the before and here's the after. Pretty nice. And remember, you can pull back the opacity if you need to. I don't see any clipping, so we're good. I can go ahead and get rid of this clipping layer by clicking right here, and the clipping layer is gone. Let's put these two layers in a group, the Dodging and Burn layers. I'll hold the Shift key down and click on D and B through Selections. Let's put that in a group with a white mask, and let's just call it uh, Dodge and Burn. Now let's take a look at our overall dodge and burn. Here is before dodging and burning, and here is after. Pretty great results in my opinion. Let's look at the overall before and after. I'm going to click my before and after action I made. Here's the before. So we've come from here a very, very nice black and white conversion, but it's a little low contrast now that we compare it to what we've achieved by using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Now check it out. Isn't that great? I love it. I think it looks really nice. A couple more things to do. I want to add a quick vignette. Let's come to the TK actions, open them up and click vignette, just a basic vignette. I'll accept the Gaussian blur radius it gives me, click OK. And then all I want to do at this point is double click on this layer and open up the layer style and come down to blend diff, the underlying layer. Pull this over a little bit. I want to protect the very dark tone. So pull it over to about here. Hold your option or all key down and split this so this feathers off about like that. And you can watch the images. You're doing that, okay? Let's click OK. And now here is the vignette before and here it is with after. But we're protecting those very dark tones in there. So that's a nice tip. I really enjoy using that blend diff with vignettes. And now I'm going to show you really quickly how to tone this image to give it a sepia look and a selenium look. This is super easy to do with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Let's just grab a color grading tool, click the plus to apply it to a layer. And I'm going to go with mid-tones, and I'll do a sepia look first. Just drag this uh, block up a little bit, not much. I don't like to add a whole lot of sepia, but this will do like kind of the mid-tone areas. And then click on the shadows, and let's just drag this also up just a little bit, and we're going to split tone those shadows, or tone the shadows, actually. But it gives you like that split tone look. It's going to stay away from the super highlights. And I really like this look. And if it's too strong, you can take this opacity and drag it off and then just build it up slowly. I just like a tiny little bit in there. Let's show you. Here's a before and here's an after. Just the subtle split tone. Now that's a sepia tone. Now let me shut this off and let me show you how to make a selenium tone. And let's go ahead and add another color grade adjustment layer. Just click on this plus. And now let's click on the mid-tones. And this time, we're just going to drag it into the bluer tones a little bit. Just a little bit there. Maybe something like about there. A little bit more, maybe. We can always pull back in the opacity. Let's go to shadows and add some of that to the shadows. Just like that. Here's the before. And here's the after. And again, if it's too strong, you can take the opacity whole way off. And then just build it up slowly and add as much as you want. How about around 82%? Here's a before and here's an after. So that's how you can add some 
toning to your image. And I'm going to do another video where I really get into a lot of split toning, working with layer masks and things like that. But this is a really quick way to add some toning to your black and white image. Let me shut this off. The last thing I want to do, somebody has probably saw this uh, area right here, that really light area, and it's probably sticking out like a sore thumb, and you're saying, is he going to get rid of that? And I am. I save that till the end. I'm going to put a blank pixel layer above here, and with my healing tool, my spot healing tool, that's J on the keyboard, and I'm just going to paint that off just like that. And there's another little light area over here. Now I'm going to leave that. I think that looks good. And if you see any areas like little light areas you don't want, like right here, here, you can just get rid of them with your healing tool. And that is pretty much it. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Give this a try. Download this image. Thank you, Peter. I appreciate you letting everybody use your image. So kind of you. And it's a really beautiful image. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.